Welcome back to part three of this scene. I was just thinking to myself that one of these days I'm gonna it's gonna sink into me that um, I always want to do I don't know whenever I get started on a scene um, I always end up doing a lot more on it than than I think I will be doing from the start and uh, I don't know this is probably I don't know how many scenes I've stamped out before, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess, I guess it, I just haven't figured that out yet. You know, after a few thousand scenes, probably. Yeah, you know, there's always something else I want to add to these scenes, and it, uh, it always it seems to take longer than a, I don't know than a, than I think it will. Uh, to do a scene, which I guess is a good thing, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, like I mentioned in uh, another video, you just, you know, you just get lost in the process, and, uh, you know, if there's anything that, uh, that's, uh, uh consistent, it, it's just that the fact that, uh, you know, stampers, we, we tend to get lost in the process, and, uh, you know, half an hour becomes two hours, becomes five hours, and, you know, we've been working on something, or a bunch of things, or a project, or whatever, and, uh, just time, time just seems to, you know, kind of melt away. Okay. Adding in some of this frost white uh, pigment in, and I can't uh, emphasize this enough, but this is kind of a dry brushing application. Okay, it's not going in and like painting something with a, you know, a thick, um, you know, brush full of paint, but it's it's going in and adding a very light kind of powdery coating of. Of, of pigment ink um, to the scene in various areas, okay? And that's the way, you know, you'll have control over the uh, over the application. You don't want it to go in in a, uh, in a big ball. Okay, now I might get it, you know, like a big ball like that, but what I do is I, after I do that, I kind of spread it out a little bit, all right? Like so. Now this is a color box, um, frost white, and that type of pigment ink is known for, you know, having a, a very slow drying time on glossy cardstock. Now it has a reputation for not drying at all on glossy cardstock, but that's when, you know, someone might take a, a stamp and make an impression onto their cardstock, glossy cardstock, you know. And that's a much thicker application of ink, you know, you have a, you know, a solid image there and that's, you can emboss with it or whatnot, but it's usually not going to dry uh, very quickly at all. You'd probably um, heat set it, but just sitting on the page without any kind of uh, heat or temperature treatment or whatnot, it's probably not going to dry very well on you. But what I'm doing is I'm adding in just very, very thin, almost dry layers of this ink, and it's never really been a problem as far as drying for me because it's such a thin layer. I'm guessing it's probably like a one twentieth of the thickness of a, you know, an impression made with that same ink, you know, so. Uh, it's never really been a problem for me. Uh, again, in terms of the drying time. Alright, this is the Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And. I've used this in another video, and some people have asked me where I've purchased it, and, you know, I'm sorry I don't carry it. I, I wouldn't even know where to source something like this. I, in years past, I think I just bought it, you know, retail, because I was using it in a demonstration, and 
I just sold it at the same price, but it's not something that I really carry. Um, that being said, you know, any kind of art store, not all arts, you have to have a kind of a good art store, but, um, you know, it's going to have all kinds of various media. This one's not a real popular media, so um, I might have an easier time finding it online if you're interested. Um, okay, I'm going in and adding uh, kind of this little... Let me, let me zoom in here. This is probably not showing at all. Uh, kind of zoomed out. Okay, this is what I'm doing right here. Um, so a little splash mark in there. Let's add kind of a bit of a, a snow flurry, if I can, without getting too many blobby marks. See that right there? It's kind of interesting. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see kind of that texture from one side of the page to the other. I don't know which one do you like better. I like that. You know, more than that. So, um, come in. I'm kind of keeping in with this motion like this. So I'm kind of splattering from this side. Um, Kind of like splattering from here, so it splatters that way, and I turn the card and I splattered this way, so I went that way. So anyway, so here again goes. Um, if you're viewing this in a real small window on your computer, what you do is just um, click on the, uh, the little YouTube link in the lower um, right hand corner and I'll take you to the YouTube site and then you know there's different viewing options in terms of the window size you can view it you know full size on your computer screen if you want to and this will probably read a little bit better that way Complete white out here, but I don't know. If you haven't guessed, it's uh, I tend to love <laughs> doing this type of finishing touches. I think I mentioned that in the previous video, but. Little finishing touches. Uh, this one, this kind of finishing touch does make me a little bit nervous because you know, I just don't know what I'm going to get. But, anyways, uh, bleed proof white means that uh, you know the uh, whatever's underneath, whatever media that you might have used underneath, uh, you know, this water based uh, bleed proof white won't bleed through so we don't get all that dye-based inks, which are of course water-soluble and could potentially bleed if you tried a different type of paint. Um, you know, it doesn't bleed through, so... Anyways, you see that texture? Kind of really gave it a... a real uh, dynamic surface there. Um, let's see what it looks like, kind of zoomed out a touch. Okay. So really, I don't know, it's kind of a crazy uh, finish to it. Um, let's see. Perfect opportunity for the, the white gel pen. It's a Uniball Signo pen. Um, here's some of the, uh, let's put some... 
real snow, you know, on some of these branches here, building up. Uh, I always have to kind of look at my screen here and see if you can see anything that I'm doing. Uh, okay. As I kind of go over some of these branches, I feel uh, myself kind of picking up some of that paint, so if the paint starts getting on here, you know, I'm talking about the bleed proof white, uh, just kind of scribble it off of there, like, like that. Okay. Okay, that's that one branch over there. Let's add some more. Don't add it over every little branch, it would you know, just be too much. So, kind of add it, you know, somewhat, I wouldn't say sparingly, but uh, just not over everything. So, perfect example of the, uh, I guess the evolution of a, a scene, you know, taking it from one thing to the next. Uh, that's why I tell people, you know, to, I mean, I mean, it's good to have a concept in mind, but you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you gotta just kind of let things happen and and see where it goes, uh, do, you know, the, the best kind of uh, innovation often comes from uh, kind of working, you know, something um, that isn't really coming out uh, the way that you intended. I'm not saying that this is, you know, one example, but but I like where the scene has gone, and it's it's not something that I, uh, you know, would have done. I don't think. But you know, from the result of all this kind of smearing of uh, the ink, you know, I think it uh, ended up being a you know a pretty decent uh, looking scene, and kind of. And uh, maybe picked up a little technique for future reference, you know, in terms of uh, kind of that paint going on. This page is full of paint and little speckles. Um, you know, a few little, little highlights down here. You know, some additional snow textures or glistening snow, maybe, where the light is hitting it. Kind of fighting my pen a little bit here because it keeps, uh, you know, these uh, white gel pens are just ballpoint pens, and I find that that ink down there is really, uh, uh, that paint, that opaque white is really kind of going into this uh, pen and clogging it, to, you know, every few dots that I lay down here. So, like I said, just kind of scribble it off and try to get it off and, you know, proceed. All right, so, usually uh, when my camera is on the uh, second taping, sometimes it shuts off a lot earlier than... Um, the first video of the night, so thank you ahead of time for watching if this shuts down and uh, quits abruptly, adding a few little stars in the sky maybe, a little flurry of larger snowballs, okay, let me show you what this is looking like right now, as a whole, okay, so quite dynamic I feel, get this glare out of the way. 
You can see that little snow effects down here kind of popping out. Snowing things up there. Larger little precise balls like that. And once again, thanks for watching. <laughs> and hope you enjoyed. Uh, I don't know. If you can think of a good name for this scene, let me know. We need something maybe in here too, a little subject matter. I don't know. Of course you wouldn't want to be walking out this, uh, walking out that kind of uh, night with that type of snow flurry. Anyways, once again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>